Why don't we take uh, our attention to the biblical text? And y'all certainly pray for me. As you can see, my voice is uh, quite uh, lightened this uh, morning. But uh, I know that God is going uh, you know, speak a little bit through uh, the message that he has for us. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Now, there are two versions. Uh, I'll start off with in our SV version, the New Revised Standard Version, which is kind of our standard biblical translation we use here at the way and then i love to read it in the message translation because it makes it so plain that i think it may actually uh give you and i a new appreciation for what god is trying to uh reveal to us today when you have matthew 11 verse 28 it should also be up on the screen uh go to the next version for me uh brother phil and it says come to me all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thank God for Jesus giving us the rundown. Amen. So let's take a look at the words of Jesus uh, given to us with a more contemporary translation, the message version. Uh, it is, uh, I love the just kind of plain language, I'm not saying that the previous version was not plain, but let's see how this translation uh, speaks to us. Are you tired? Touch your neighbor. Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Jesus is saying, get away with me and you'll recover your life. Yes, Lord. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and rightly. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. So uh, again, we're going to kick off our Lighten Your Load lighten your load series. Bow your heads with me as we seek the help of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our heart so we will not sin against you. And please send your anointing that makes teaching and preaching easy. Touch me, my body, my voice, and all these different ears that are here today so we may hear your word in Jesus' name we pray let the people of God say amen. amen all right help me and give your neighbor a quick high five and tell them lighten your load <clears throat> Jesus again says come unto me all you who are weary all you who are carrying heavy burdens come unto me so you can find rest so you can take on his yoke and his burdens which are light now this week has certainly been a week of of great challenge in many of our lives if i were to give you all the microphone I bet you at least a few of us would have uh, a testimony of some things you had to deal with that you weren't necessarily expecting to come your way some of us had a curveball or two that we were like wait a second that was not how I woke up Wednesday morning uh, expecting my day to go some of us have had to wrestle with uh, daily variety of systemic and structural evil that we are constantly assaulted with our personhood our dignity constantly being called into question some of us have had to deal with spiritual attack and uh, temptations of our flesh and of this world and and the the war that is going on between the will of God for our lives and everybody else's will including your own amen I mean, I can't help but 
uh, always be reminded uh, of all the different things that happened during the week that you and I would not expect. But then when it does happen, it does create a certain kind of opportunity for reflection. Uh, I am uh, certainly uh, was moved with uh, great despair. One of our young people named Jasmine Richards, one of our Black Lives Matter activists down in Pasadena was arrested and jailed for uh, being accused of lynching. Amen. And all she was doing was protesting in the streets and, and trying to intervene with one of uh, young people who uh, was seemingly being uh, falsely uh, either detained or harassed by the police and by this young person joining Sister Jasmine's uh, 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 procession. The police and folks came back and arrested her and charged her with lynching. So she's sitting in a Pasadena, Pasadena jail on this morning. That caused me to feel like I had an extra burden I wasn't anticipating having to carry. I was uh, stunned to hear another one of our young people out in the St. Louis Ferguson area who was killed uh, by the police. The, the, the verdicts came back that the police are not going to be charged with a crime for shooting this young man in the back. Uh, they, 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 uh, you know, made up all kind of stories from the first day time it happened, and even though they acknowledge there is inconsistency in the stories, another cop is going free and not being held accountable. Uh, I was in Chicago yesterday and the day before, and uh, was surprised to watch the scroll on the bottom of the TV uh, uh, announce to the world the death of Muhammad Ali. Uh, who for many of us has been uh, a great champion and hero, not just a boxer, but he has been uh, arguably uh, the first uh, uh, celebrity freedom fighter uh, who actually showed us that you got to be willing to give up everything if you want to be consistent to fight for freedom and justice in the world. And, uh, you know, it's so fascinating because when Many of our our uh, uh, icons die. Uh, it's so interesting how the mainstream media and culture loves to embrace them in their death. But when they're alive, standing up for justice, boy, you think these folk that uh, they vilify and crucify. I mean, let's not forget Muhammad Ali uh, was everything that mainstream America hated, all the way up until he could not talk. Then they fell in love with Brother Muhammad Ali when he couldn't speak anymore. Uh, I may preach on that a little bit later. But we know that all of these kinds of issues, they come and we are not always prepared to experience these issues as they come our way. Uh, and yet we also can appreciate that without these kinds of unannounced challenges that we have, how many of you know we all have regular challenges that we deal with every single day? Some of us have to wake up to a job that we prayed for but regret God gave us. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Some of us, I, I, I'm not going to say that about your relationship or your family, but some of us wake up carrying that burden too. Some of us have a great tension between what we aspire to be and the reality of where we are right now. And it is this backdrop that I believe God would speak to you and I today, this morning, to help us to appreciate that no matter what challenge we have, we are always being invited by Jesus to come to him. This is indeed, I think, the first point that I will lift up if we're talking about what does it mean for you and I to lighten our load. We must make a beeline to get to Jesus. Now, this seems always rudimentary and elementary, but isn't it interesting how hard it is for you and I to get to Jesus? Hello. How many of you can uh, think of all the many times where you know that you need the help of the Lord, 
but you find the pathway of getting to Jesus to be filled with obstruction, filled with barriers, filled with difficulty, and every other option does not nearly seem to be that difficult to reach for. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, it seems to me that whenever I am trying to do right, there is always other options. Options I don't even ask for. Hello, somebody. Uh, there are always alternatives that are always competing with my heart's desire to get to Jesus. And yet we still see Jesus inviting us with these wonderful inquiries. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? False notions of relationship with God. Are you tired of settling for that which does not get you what you know you need? If you're tired of that, part of what you and I must continue to make as a priority is getting to Jesus this summer. You and I will have all kinds of opportunities. We'll have more free time. We'll have all kinds of nice uh, 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 vacation uh, schedules. We'll have all kinds of, of barbecues and we'll have all kinds of things that we should rightly take advantage of. And I also want to compel you in this season will you have more time can you imagine your proximity to Jesus becoming much more close? Can you imagine that getting to Jesus, not just the Jesus of your, uh, you know, your Sunday school classes or the Jesus of the sermons that I preach and we preach on Sundays, but the Jesus of Scripture that is always inviting you to a wholly different way of living. You see, what you and I must continue to appreciate is that the closer you get to Jesus, the more your life style, your life choices, the more they begin to be shaped after the image and the likeness of God. And why must your lifestyle be shaped after the image and likeness of God? Because that lifestyle is the lifestyle of rest. Even in the middle of all of your turmoil, can you imagine how your lifestyle can be oriented to rest? That the choices you make every day, even in the middle of your difficulty, can help you achieve rest. And not just rest for you, but rest for everyone around you. Don't you know that why we are called to live out lives of justice and mercy and, and peace is not just because we have this altruistic desire to see uh, the world, uh, you know, be some panacea, but our call to do this is an outgrowth of us having a lifestyle after Jesus, the one who would give us all rest. I bet you you would have a more restful life if there was less injustice in the world. I bet you your family would have a more restful life if you weren't always wondering how you were going to have to pay rent in this Bay Area where corporate greed is making it impossible for anybody to live here. I bet you you would have more rest if your child did not, uh, you know, constantly be at risk for being suspended or expelled for being a kid. Hello, somebody. I bet you'd be more at rest if your relationship between your loved ones was not so tenuous because of trauma, anger, and pain. A lifestyle that pursues the ways of Jesus will give us all the tools we need so we can have rest. 
if we don't pursue the lifestyle of Jesus, you will not have rest. You will be restless. You will be conflict dead you will be constantly uh, under the assault of all of these forces that are anti-christ so the question you and i have to continue to ask ourselves what keeps us from coming to jesus for everything what alternatives are you constantly having to you know reject resist overcome in order to really seek and get to Jesus and there could be very you know concrete things there could be things that you need to think a little bit about we always hear at the way love to talk about people places and things right who are the people that get in the way of you getting to Jesus what are the places you hanging out in that make it difficult for you to get to Jesus what are the things that you like the things that you do the things you feel like you can't live without that are getting in the way of you getting to Jesus what are the falsities you've been told about Jesus about following the ways of Jesus that keep you from getting to Jesus. All of these things are things that I believe you and I must interrogate if our load will be lightened. Pat yourself on the chest and say, I must get to Jesus. I must get to Jesus. The second thing that I'll lift up, certainly for us, if you and I are going to lighten our loads, we must get stronger. Everybody say, get stronger. Jesus says in verse 28, get away with me and you'll recover your life. Tell your neighbor, get your life. Amen. This is, I'm about, if you, if you get with Jesus, he will help you to get, you know, that's when our nice little movement says, I just got my life, you know, get your life, right? It is actually this, I think, it is a way for you and I to appreciate that the more we follow, pursue, reach out, spend time with Jesus, we will get stronger. Your load will be lighter when you are stronger so you can carry the load. And if you are like me, there are all kinds of muscles that I have not worked out in a long time. And it makes my load a lot heavier. Hello, somebody. I think there's a word called atrophy that you could apply to the muscles in our bodies that characterize how when we are not working out these muscles that you didn't even know you had everything will feel heavier I am convinced that there are certain issues and struggles and challenges that we are called to get stronger so we ourselves can help address them there are certainly things that only God can do <clears throat> and I am very clear about making sure God give me the uh, wisdom to know what it is that only you can do because if you can only do this then all I'm called to do is show up and be faithful and wait for you to work it out but how many of you know there are things that you can do to build up your spiritual strength, your mental strength, your emotional strength, your physical strength, your relational strength, things that we can do to get stronger so our load will feel lighter. And in all the many different ways that you and I are called to get stronger, I believe it allows these muscles 
that have been gifted to us by God to be a tool for our liberation, a tool for our spiritual transformation, a tool for our maturity in God. But when you and I aren't working out our muscles to be stronger, then we make ourselves vulnerable to all the enemies that are indeed stronger than us. Don't you know that there is a force of evil in the world, both systemic, communal, and personal, that you got to be strong enough to resist? The Apostle Paul says in Romans, I believe that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers in high places, rulers of darkness, wickedness. Now, you better understand that, uh, you know, you ain't going to be able to resist those powers by just, you know, clicking your heels and wishing upon a star. Don't you know there are powers that have set 10, 15, 20 years of plans in motion to keep you and I subjected to their evil machinations? We were in Chicago and uh, we were at a conference and this conference, the Justice Conference, a conference that a couple of our friends, Brother Mark Reddy, Vicki Reddy, Ken Weitzman and others helped to launch and get started. And uh, this conference was uh, uh, situated in a congregation uh, that had bought up a lot of land in the former uh, Cabrini Green projects neighborhood and what was so fascinating about it because I didn't know where I was going you know I just know I was going to the justice conference I went last year and they know they moved the venue and because I'm not from there and many of us weren't from there we just were going to a location and somebody put out that this used to be, you know, the Cabrini Green Projects, you know, where, you know, Florida and James Evans and JJ and all them lived, you know, in the good times. <laughs> or the not so good times, maybe. <laughs> and it became a fascinating opportunity for us to appreciate that the projects, the housing projects all across this country were nothing but a bunch of social experiments that were contrived by folk who wanted to place people in close proximity as a way to figure out how they would react and act if they were piled on top of one another without certain access to resources. And don't you know, when you and I don't know this history, we can be complicit in the evil machinations of people who've come long before us, people who are acting right now, and people who will be coming after we go off the scene. Now let me bring it on down a little bit to your own life. How many of you know folk who mean you no good? Now, I'm not talking about people that, you know, you just kind of like, you know, oh, I don't know. Uh, I give them the benefit of that. I'm talking about people, I got, I think we all got at least one or two folk who we know they, we are on their minds. Uh-huh. When we wake up, or when they wake up, when we show up to work, when we walking through the neighborhood, they are obsessed with our demise. I don't know. I can think of a couple of them right now. <laughs> but don't you know that if we are indeed getting stronger, we will understand through our faith in God we can get to a place where David, like David said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
what kind of strength is required for you to be sitting at a table in the presence of your enemies and you yourself ain't out there trying to, you know, get your enemies before they get you first. I believe it is a strength of faith. It is a strength of character. It is a strength of purpose. Realizing that if I can, if we can, as the people of God, as the community of the faithful, as people living in a fallen world, people who are aware of our own and even others' human weakness, we know that if we get stronger by spending time with Jesus, he will help us recover our lives. Don't you know the worst thing that anyone can do to you is take your life. And yet we as resurrection people believe that God has the power to raise us from the dead. Meaning that death has lost its sting. Now certainly, you know, it's not many of us who are looking around for places to kind of just lose our literal lives. But I want to submit to you that if and when death loses its hold on the people of God when we lose our fear of loss we won't react to the threats both internal and external with a sense of weakness or hopelessness but we will gain strength so the question what practices must we engage in to get stronger? What muscles need recovery to make your load lighter? Let's move on to this next point because I think these practices may actually help us. You and I, if we're going to lighten our load, we need to lose some weight. Touch your neighbor, somebody, and tell them, lose some weight. Wait. And you know, in a society that is over obsessed with size and appearance, don't get caught up in false notions of beauty and size and it's not what I'm talking about you know because this world will make you feel like you ain't never good enough so we're not talking about that I'm talking about Hebrews chapter 11 I love this passage of scripture uh, this was one of the passages I almost preached this sermon from but it just made it into my sermon because I felt like we needed to hear it that we should lay aside every weight and the sin which easily distracts us. What would it look like this summer if you started to make a list of the weights and the sins that you must shed this summer? Don't let the summer be a time where you're gaining more weights. <laughs> What would it like for you to actually go into the summer saying, I'm going to lose some of this baggage that is keeping me from elevating and achieving God's best in my life. Now, it's so important to, again, appreciate. Uh, I love uh, one of my sisters, uh, Shaniqua Barnes. Dr. Shaniqua Barnes wrote a powerful book called Too Heavy a Yoke the the burden of the strong black woman syndrome and and i i i i'm i'm i'm, I'm hoping i can get dr shaniqua barnes to come down and speak not just to the to the uh, black women or female members of our congregation but all of us because i do think there is a certain burden that women are taught to carry i know for sure my black brown uh, 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 women, sisters are, are, are invited to carry a load that is often beyond your ability to bear. We are 
as men, you know, bought into a system of patriarchy that will, you know, kind of create these certain power dynamics whereby, uh, you know, we don't always appreciate that, you know, just because a woman uh, may not necessarily be as, you know, physically strong as us or socially uh, positioned in a fallen world with less power than us, it does not mean that the voice of women, the ideas of women, the leadership of women should be diminished. Some of the most powerful women at the way, I am so proud and glad to, you know, watch them preach and teach and disciple and, 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 and lead out the work of ministry. And as a leader, it does not diminish me because you are surrounded by strong women. Hello, somebody. And, and, and sometimes, you know, uh, the weight of patriarchy, of sexism, all these different things are things that we have to shed. Because you can carry around a weight that God did not intend for you to carry. Hello, somebody. Sometimes you and I need to be mindful that the weight we must shed is often stress-related. Many of us are under so much stress that we don't even know the stress is killing us even while we think we're thriving. My doctor, therapist, all kind of folk, they tell me, you know, Pastor Mike, you need to lessen your stress because even when you're sleeping, you're not resting. Ain't that something? How can you be asleep and not be resting? Because stress, the physiological uh, impact of stress on the body releases cortisone and all kinds of chemicals in our bodies that cause you and I to not even be able to be at our best, be irritable, paranoid unable to focus when we used to teach in the schools at the b-tech campus and a lot of our young people living in war zones and then they would be asked to come into class and learn trigonometry and they literally slept through a drive-by last night and in order to get to school, they didn't have time for breakfast, so they got some hot Cheetos and some 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 top ramen and red soda from the store across the street. How many of you know that all that compiled together creates stress? We are invited as people of God, not just personally, but as a community to alleviate stress. What does it mean for you and I this summer to engage in practices that will help us to minimize our stress? Spiritual practices like prayer, meditation. Some of us need to go learn some of that yoga stuff. Amen. Mindfulness. Hello, somebody. Amen. Don't, don't, don't get so deep and spooky that you miss out on practices that could help you shed some of this weight. When we're here worshiping God with our hands lifted up, I believe God is breaking chains. Chains that only your worship can, be, can break. Some of us ought to try some of that this summer. I don't know, Pastor. I'm afraid to close my eyes. I don't know what the person next to me, me is doing. Well, that's why your eyes is closed. Amen. You ain't, you ain't got to be hung up on what they talking about. What would it look like for you to be like Isaiah where he says, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And while I was focusing on the Lord, I saw a vision. A vision that showed me all the different ways that I need to be cleansed. Hello, somebody. You focusing on the Lord can get you to a place where you can get a revelation 
about what you must shed so you can be free. So are you able then, my brothers and sisters, here is a, a, good, a good question, to diagnose the weight which weighs you down, how do you shed what you shouldn't carry? This is why I believe it's so important for you to engage in concrete practices to shed your weight, to lessen the weight that is on your shoulder. I mentioned voting earlier. You should vote because if you vote, it helps to lessen the weight of oppression on our shoulders. We do violence prevention work because we want to lessen the impact of violence in our communities. Things that you and I can do that God will empower us to do. It is not the case that everything that God would have done in the world, God will do without our partnership and participation. Don't you know that there is a symbiotic relationship between God's power and your availability? There is a relationship between God's power and our availability. So think about this. If God says he can do anything but fail and all he's asking us is to say like Moses Samuel Deborah Esther Rahab and all the other folk here am I Lord send me anything but fail here am I send me here am I send me anything but fail that seems to me like a formula for success, progress, and faithfulness. And so for many of us, I think this season is really a season about us. As much as I want the world to change, I want God to change me every day. So then I can be better positioned to change the world. So if that is then your desire, the last thing I'll say that I think will allow us to lighten our load, seek godly formation. Seek formation. Verse 29, man, I just love the way this translator said this. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace in the regular more traditional translations that would be the verse where it talks about take my yoke upon me and learn of me now many of us talking about yoke I drink that every morning or I eat that every morning I don't know what you're talking about a yoke I can spend a lot of time exegeting a yoke but we ain't got to be that deep to get a clear understanding Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Could you imagine that there are ways of Jesus, a lifestyle of Jesus that is unforced rhythms of grace? This is a real deep idea. Could it be that you and I created in the image of God or more naturally disposed to living rightly than we are to living disordered lives. And that because we've participated in all of these terrible ways of living, systems of this world, that we have to, are literally forcing ourselves to do evil when in reality, if we learn the ways of Jesus, doing the right thing could be an unforced rhythm waiting to emerge. Now, you know, if you and I have been programmed to punch when somebody punches you, 
uh, then you going to fulfill that program. If you and I have been taught to work until we drop, we are going to fulfill that program. But if we surrender our lives, ourselves, to rhythms that naturally flow out of all of us being created in the image of God, could it be that the ways of Jesus are not hard when they are truly tried? But many of us just don't try because we believe it's too hard. How many know there ain't no easy way or hard way to go to heaven or hell? I wish I could <laughs> preach to somebody. I wish I had a voice where I could just tune that up a little bit. The scripture says that the ways of the wicked are hard. So if you feel like it's a struggle to do the right thing, you still struggling doing the wrong thing. So if you go struggle, why not struggle getting closer to your destiny? You think it's hard to have a job. You think it's hard to serve in this vocational capacity. You think it's hard to be faithful to your loved ones. Imagine what happens when all those realities start to break apart. It ain't gonna get easier. You're gonna struggle even in the absence of those. But how many of you know when you take the words of Jesus seriously, come unto me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, the process of getting to Jesus may be hard. The process of struggling against oppression may be hard. The process of struggling against injustice may be hard. The process of staying in a relationship of mutuality and respect and commitment may be hard. The process of loving your children, oh, your kids, may be hard. The process of being a good steward on your job and in your community may be hard. But there is no easy alternative. But you have been told by Jesus that if you hang out with me in your hard life process and learn my ways Jesus says I will shape you and form you in such a way that will make the hard things easier I would never dare suggest to any of us that following Jesus is going to be this kind of floating through life, feet never touching the ground. Everything is going to be what I want it to be, when I want it to be, how I want it to be. But I have found and I can speak with great confidence that there is indeed a rest for the soul of the one who decides to come, to learn, to lose the weights. And in a world where everything is twirling around us, I think sometimes the best you and I can ask for is blessed rest. Stand with me, everyone, and let's spend a few moments seeking God's voice.